There are three types of platforming games. There are Castlevania-style platforming games which hate you, hate everything about you, hate your car, the way you brush your hair, your clothes, your taste in music, and what you drink. There are Mega Man games which, while not being evil and hating you utterly, do require that you possess mutant powers of precognition to get through some segments of the game, either to know the boss order correct right off the bat, or requiring that you um, be able to precisely predict where the platforms are going to appear when, and so forth and so on. And then there are Mario-style platformers, which basically give you all the tools you need right off the bat, and while there's some trial and error involved, it's a bit simpler to get uh, simpler, but it's more forgiving in getting through them than the Mega Man platformer or the Castlevania platformer. It is one of the games of the latter type that I'm going to talk to you about this week. Um, the game is Chippendale Rescue Rangers from Capcom for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is the second of their series of Disney licensed platformers for the for this system. The game has you playing as Chip or Dale, um, depending on whether it's single player or two player, as you try to rescue Gadget from the clutches of the evil Fat Cat, who's the main villain, or one of the main villains, from the Chip from the Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers cartoon. Um, the game is fairly straightforward. Um, the jumping control is pretty good. Um, you don't really jump on your enemies, take them out, it's more pick up bodies in the environment and throw them at your enemies. Um, and that's basically it. You just run around to reach the exit. Uh, there's a boss fight at the end of most levels where you're throwing a rubber ball at, your, at the boss. And, but that's pretty much it. The rubber ball mechanic in the boss fight is pretty well handled in terms of, um, you don't have to worry about losing the ball, it'll bounce back. Uh, between the borders of the screen. If you're hit by it, you'll be stunned, but you don't lose any life. You aren't killed for it or anything like that. You might end up getting hit by the by the boss because you can get out of the way, but it's not as ruthless as that. Well, the game is pretty difficult. It will send a lot of enemies at you quickly without having boxes handy or apples handy to throw at the enemies to take them out. Um, the game is good by, um, at giving you resources, take the enemies out somewhat regularly though, in terms of having boxes handy, which you can also hide under so that the enemies were to punch into the box. You lose the box, but the enemy is also taken out, or just having the boxes handy. And if you are carrying a box, you are able to carry carry it with you through most of the level in terms of it doesn't affect your jumping performance heavily. Um, as I mentioned, there is a little bit of trial and error here. The enemies tend to rather quickly will die often when you're getting the hang of a level. Whether it's um, the first level... Actually, the first level itself, I did get a game over at the first level. And this isn't a situation of me being reckless or anything like that. I remember seeing a friend play this game when I was in grade school, and he too got a game over on the first level. So, it's a matter of that. Um, the game does have a, a sacrament being a little more harsh in difficulty than, say, Mario, it does have its problems. The, um, in particular, the boss, not just the boss fights, but the, uh, game doesn't give you feedback in terms of how many lives you've got. Um, the health bar, it's there. You can tell me how much health you have if you die, but once you die, it doesn't tell you how many, uh, extra lives you have left. And while you can earn extra lives by collecting flowers or stars in the environment, 50, star 50 flowers for an extra life and 10 stars for an extra life, you still, once you get the extra life, it still doesn't give you the necessary piece of feedback of, okay, I now have 10 extra lives, I now have 5 extra lives, etc. Which makes things difficult in terms of figuring out how many lives you have left until you need to use your next continue. The control is okay. Um, it's a little tricky steering in midair on the jumps. I, you're not really able to do it that well. It's more straight up linear jumps, which is a bit of a nuisance. There are some forward jumps that you can do, but it's not as good as, say, Mario or something like that in terms of the steering in midair. Um, other than that, the game is solid. The game is enjoyable. I've played better. I've played worse. 
it's a game I would actually recommend picking up from the beginning. It's enjoyable, it's fun, it has a bit of non-linearity to it, most of non-linearity, but um, a bit of choice there in terms of your route you can take to the end of the level, end of the stage. And yet I'd say it's probably one of the better Capcom Disney licensed platformers out there. It's one that you probably won't regret picking up. So I want to thank you very much for listening, and tune in for my next review, which will be of uh, Ninja Gaiden 2, the NES game. Um, this will be related to my recap review of the related uh, Nintendo Power Strategy Guide. Thank you very much for listening and watching. I'm Alex Case, and enjoy your day.